it's a silly story, but it's kind of cute where my, um, I heard the Dalai Lama's name when I was a very small child. Um, in the 80s, there was a lot of uh, joke songs on the radio. It was like a popular trend to have, you know, like Weird Al Yankovic, you know, this one. Um, and there was a song, there was an artist whose name I don't remember, who used to make fun of all of the religions of the world and all of the religious leaders of the world. And um, at that time, my mother was a radio DJ for college radio. And she loved to play these joke songs, making fun of religion, because she had a lot of um, negative experiences with fundamentalism. And she was kind of like working out some stuff. And um, I was only five years old, so I didn't know all of her angst. I just heard on the radio someone singing Dalai Lama, Dalai Lama. And one of the lyrics said, he never even kills mosquitoes. And they were making fun of him, like, what a fool. He doesn't even kill mosquitoes. But I didn't realize it was a joke because I was wow. a little girl. And I thought, that's the most wonderful thing I ever heard. I want to be just like that. And I asked my mother, who is this Dalai Lama? And she said, oh, I think he's like the Pope for Buddhists or something. And when the Chinese invaded, uh, he escaped to India and uh, told his disciples not to retaliate and not to have violence. And so the uprising was very short. And because of a lot of his work in peaceful areas, he got the Nobel Peace Prize. And I thought this man lost his whole country and he didn't want to fight back. And he's so kind and gentle, he won't even kill a mosquito. I want to be like that when I grow up. So I only knew those two things and that was it. And, Cause I was five years old, you know, I couldn't really cope with more than that anyway. But for years I thought I need to be like the Dalai Lama and not fight back when people are terrible, just stand firm and assertive, but not punch back, you know? And uh, clearly state to people all again and again, I'm not going to kill anything. I'm not going to kill insects, you know, and uh, I used to practice those mosquitoes biting me and say, okay, you can have my blood. You know, I was a very <laughs> eccentric child. And my parents were nice about it, but they thought it was weird, but they were like, that's cute, you know. And, it is uh, cute. Yeah, it's right? It's, it's super sweet. cute. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I had a lot of pets in those days and, uh, you know, guinea pigs and rabbits and cats and things like that. And I don't know. I just thought of him like a superhero. Yeah, but a superhero I could grow up to be like. And then the years go by. And when I was kind of 11, 12, 13, those kind of years are traditional times to become an adult in the church for Christian people who are Protestants. Um, you know, Catholics have a different way of operating, but Protestants, it's very common for you to like choose to enter the church around that year. Like with me yeah. too? Yeah, very much. Yeah, very much. <laughs> and uh, so you do classes, you know, about the Bible and you do, you know, like study groups and discussion groups and activities. And my parents thought, uh, even though they were not particularly religious, they thought that they should do that just in case. And at the end of it, you get baptized, which, you know, saves you from going to hell. So they thought, just in case, <laughs> you know, let's send her to this church school. So it was like an after school program that went for a few months. And afterwards, you like declare that you are Christian. And I said, I am declaring that I am not. <laughs> and uh, I had been going to a Zen center to sit with them maybe once a week, just meditation, not really classes, but I really loved it. And I had some Buddhist books that I'd been reading about and I didn't really understand them, but I was very intrigued. And so when it came time to declare that I was Christian, I said, I'm sorry, I'm not. And they asked if they could baptize me anyway, because they were a very progressive church and they wanted to, you know, save me or something. And the minister, she comes and she like has this holy water. She's putting this cross on my forehead. And I just remember thinking, this is not for me. This is not for me. And afterwards I said, you guys are so lovely. And I, I love what you have to say. And Jesus sounds like a very nice person, but this is not for me. And so that was when I decided to be Buddhist. And that's when I took refuge um, in this tiny little Zen center in Montana. And uh, that's when I became a little bit more serious about it. So 
I think I sat with that Zen group all through my teenage years because they were the only Buddhists around at that time. And then when I left home, maybe 17, 18 years old, then I started sitting with Tibetan Buddhists in a different town, slightly bigger city. And um, yeah, it just slowly, slowly evolved. Yeah, so yes. it was like, for some people, it's like lightning, you know, and they suddenly shift. But for me, it was it was pretty gradual. There was just always a love of what his holiness represented, you know? 